When it comes to tuning options for late model cars, undoubtedly reflashing has become the go-to option. This is a method where the factory data out of the ECU is downloaded, then it's displayed in a way that we can manipulate it graphically, and then finally, once the changes are made, it can be reflashed back into the factory ECU. So this simplifies our tuning greatly, but in particular, we get a lot of questions about how this technology can be applied in the European market, and there seems to be a lot of confusion around reflashing when applied to the vast array of European cars. We're here with Orléans from B-Flash to find out a little bit more about this technology. So first of all, the, the confusion I think we get is that when it comes to European cars, there's a lot of people who really aren't actually making tuning changes. Instead, what they've got is what's referred to as a slave flashing kit, and they're just buying off-the-shelf maps to suit the car and flashing that in. So that's not really how we generally try and operate. We want to make uh, specific changes to suit, but this does get a little bit difficult. Can you tell us for a start why we see more difficulties with reflashing European ECUs than JDM or perhaps uh, US domestic market models? So most European vehicles are having Bosch ECUs and Siemens ECUs. They used to be highly protected, so you will need some technical solution that lets you bypass some factory securities to get around that and be able to load your own data in there. So that's the main reason why it's quite hard to flash. So to start with, the reading and the, the flashing is just more difficult because of this security aspect? Yes. Now we also see with European ECUs in particular, the Bosch and Siemens that you've mentioned, uh, it's quite common instead of reflashing via the OBD2 port to actually either bench flash or uh, to even pull the ECU apart and access directly onto the board. So why, is, why are those methods necessary and why would you need to choose one over the other? So the most common one is the OBD programming directly through the OBD port, uh, but in some cases you will need to do bench flash or boot, boot flash as you mentioned, when you will need to open the ECU and directly connect to it. The reason you will need that is mostly to disable the security that uh, prevents you from flashing the ECU through OBD. Um, the other reason is it's a lot faster to flash directly by, by via bench rather than OBD. So could we give us some example of the time frames? I'm used to working with reflash packages that might take sort of less than a minute to flash changes. What are we looking at with these Bosch and Siemens ECUs and how much does uh, bench flashing or boot flashing speed up that process? So usually when you flash in OBD it will take something around 15 minutes. Um, that's only for the first flash when you do the unlock sequence. Then if you want to do only the calibration flash it's on usually 45, to one, 45 seconds to one minute. It's a lot faster. Uh, boot flashing and bench flashing are usually one minute for reading and 20 seconds for flashing, so it's a lot faster. If you can just pop up the OOD and directly connect to the ECU, a bench flash will be a lot better. Also, you have to keep in mind that uh, unlike OBD, a bench flash and a boot flash are reading the whole content from the ECU, so you have a full backup, you can have access to the EEPROM, VIN numbers, all that information. So a lot more information than you can get via OBD2? Correct. All right, so let's talk about the solutions that someone is going to need if they want to reflash these sorts of ECUs. So uh, first of all, talk about the hardware that's required, and this is where B-Flash comes in, I understand? Correct. The B-Flash is the tool that will let you pull the, ECU, the data out of the ECU and flash back the data into ECU. We're offering all the programming methods we mentioned earlier. We're also doing the data logging and diagnostic. Um, then you will only have a binary file, a raw binary file then you will, that you will need to edit with a third party software, for example, we know LS. Okay, so this is the part where I think a lot of people's eyes start glazing over because with the European cars, unfortunately, often we don't see uh, complete definitions. And what I'm talking about here, for those who don't understand, when you download that raw binary file that you just mentioned, uh, basically it's useless to us and, and this where a, a computer programmer essentially. And what we need is a way of finding whereabouts in that raw file, the different maps for fuel, ignition, torque control, boost, etc., are located, what size they are so that they can be displayed graphically. Now a lot of people are using WinOLS to reverse engineer the ECU and find those maps but in my opinion this is a technique that's probably beyond maybe 95% of tuners. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that WinOLS software works and, and how it is used? So WinOLS is a, an editor that will let you edit the data inside a binary file. Uh, you can define your own maps, you can have some definition provided by some third party companies uh, that will tell you where are the map located for example. You will uh, have a ton of companies that are offering that kind of services. Uh, you can also do that yourself and edit the map uh, on your own. 
Um, the good thing is, unless, uh, unlike uh, many tools on the market, um, you won't be stuck to the definition to provide to you. So you can have access to all the parameters from the factory CU, uh, and if you do some reverse engineering via software like IDEA Pro or other software, uh, you will be able to find all the parameters you want to work with. So just to, to sort of dig in a bit deeper there, so I think this is another area a lot of people miss, a factory ECU, particularly the modern generation, incredibly complex, literally thousands upon thousands of different tables and parameters in there to control every aspect of it. So even with the commercial reflash software we see for US domestic market and Japanese cars where these are quite common and easily available, the definitions we get often are incomplete. The, the companies have really only defined the key maps that they feel are necessary. So what you're talking about there with WinOLS, you've got complete access to the entire binary file, so you're really only limited by your own intelligence and capability, I guess, to find the relevant files? Correct. Oh, so the relevant parameters tables? Correct. So actually most, most software that are doing uh, pre-definition on the, on the market are only giving you like 300 to 600 maps most of the time. A factory CU most of the time contains something between 40,000 and 60,000 maps. So you really have access to a lot more information and a lot more data that will let you do some much more fine tuning. Fair to say though, probably those commercial definitions where you've got, as you just mentioned, maybe 600 maps or thereabouts, that's probably going to be sufficient for most mainstream tuners where they're doing perhaps a basic bolt-on, maybe intake exhaust headers and wanting to optimise the tune for that. Uh, where it gets a little bit more complex is maybe where you're taking a naturally aspirated engine and adding a supercharger or turbo. Uh, how does that change what you need access to? So. You're right, approximately 600 maps is and more than enough for most tuning you want to do. If you just want to raise the boost pressure or to change the ignition timing in the Lambda, that's perfectly fine. But once you try to do, for example, an Audi R8 or Lamborghini Rakan with a twin turbocharger, uh, then you will probably not have enough because you will need to trick the sensors, install some new sensors that can read some positive boost pressure that the factory you can't. Um, all this parameters need to be changed in the ECU and if you just buy a standard definition you will not be able to edit these parameters. Alright, so this is what we sort of hear about here is a lot of people buying uh, a reflashing solution for our European vehicles and finding out that these definitions supplied by the, the company really are very incomplete or very, very basic at best. And then they're in the situation where if they can't use Win OLS themselves to find those maps that they need, they're kind of stuck. And, and this is where I see sort of a, a change between the skill set of a tuner and the skill set for someone who can reverse engineer a factory ECU. So, You've also got access to companies such as BC Consulting where you can buy these definitions. Can you tell us how that works? So you can buy through BC Consulting definitions like that will give you access to the whole, uh, the whole file. Uh, we provide two kind of definitions, the full map pack, which will give you access to the 30,000 to 60,000 maps, and what we call the limited map pack that will give you something between 400 and 600 maps depending on the platform. And these are available for the majority of popular cars? Correct. Most European cars are covered by this platform. And what sort of money would an end user be purchasing these map packs for in round terms? It's highly dependent on the platform. Okay. So Can you give us a ballpark maybe? It's Based on the platform it would be between 200 euros to up to 2000 euros. Okay. Now there are some benefits as well which I think are maybe often overlooked with retaining that factory ECU versus going to a full standalone and we've seen the technology and full standalones uh, increase dramatically, uh, however there's also the requirement if you are re retaining factory DCT transmission, you want everything else to work as it did in the stock environment then you've got to replicate all of the messaging between these different systems whereas you're dealing with a factory ECU it's sole job in life the way it was uh, the firmware was written was to run that one car. So give us your, your side of where the pros are on retaining that factory ECU. So most of the new cars are have, having a high network integration. So for example, you will have CAN bus, LIN bus, and flex ray bus. And um, you will just need to replicate all that uh, in your aftermarket ECU to be able to communicate with the other modules in the car. So for example, if you want to retain the factory transmission, an automatic transmission or DCT transmission, uh, you will need to be able to properly communicate with the ECU. In case the ECU is flex rail, as is the case on the new Supra or the new BMW, well, non aftermarket ECU are flex rail at the moment, so you will be forced to use the factory ECU if you want to do the things properly. So that flex ray, that's essentially a, an upcoming technology we're seeing now that's uh, essentially similar to CAM, but as you mentioned there, none of the factory 
none of the aftermarket ECUs currently are supporting FlexRay, so that's going to be that next learning curve for those aftermarket suppliers. FlexRay have been around for more than 10 to 15 years from BMW, so that's the reason. Well, it's quite recent, but it's still quite old. I mean, so yes, yeah, you will need to replace the fact to emulate the functions for. Now I just want to get into the, the cost involved with uh, if, if a tuner wanted to get into this European market and break in with a product like your B Flash setup, uh, it, it's still not cheap, it's not going to be something that's going to interest maybe the, the end user, an enthusiast at home that's just purchased a, a late model Audi or BMW, uh, can you give us a rundown on the cost involved? So first you have to know that the tool is not designed for the end user, it's something that is designed for the portioners and their dealers. Uh, so the cost involved is 4,900 for the master kit, which is something that you have for your portioner. And if you have dealers, you will have the slave kit that is linked to the master, and then it will be 2,900 euros. Okay, so 4,900 euros for the master kit, 2,900 for the slave kit. And just that slave kit as well, I just want to dive into a little bit, what, what is the difference there and how would a master dealer uh, work with dealers below them with that slave kit? So the difference between the master and the slave kit is that the slave kit is reading encrypted files that are encrypted with a unique key from your master key for your master kit. So only your master can decrypt the slave file and not someone else. So the slave is not able to uh, edit by himself the, the file, for example. So this would be a situation where a tuner set themselves up as specialists in a particular model, they've developed maybe staged upgrades, they've spent the time developing their calibrations to be perfect for their staged upgrades and then they can have dealers potentially all around the world where they're selling those staged upgrades, the slave pack and then the dealer can uh, basically upload a, an encrypted calibration that they can't see? That's correct. All right, look, interesting to get that insight there. And if people want to find out more about the B-Flash product, where can they go to to find out? Just on our website, bflash.eu. Oh, awesome. Thanks for the chat there. Nice to meet you. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.